everyone, welcome to my presentation. I am Tomita Hack. Today I am going to present the article, Preliminary Experiments on a Microbial Fuel Cell. Before starting my presentation, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for amazing content and click the bell icon for timely updates on our channel. To determine if microbes could generate electrical energy using a hydrocarbon, experiments were initiated. Experiments with ethane were unsuccessful. When microbes or glucose oxidase were added to a solution of glucose, electrical output was observed. Biological dehydrogenations take place in the absence of an immediate direct participation of oxygen. A wire could couple oxygen with the microbial dehydrogenation and hydrogen ionization reactions. The electrons transferred would react at the oxygen electrode to produce hydroxyl ions. It migrate through a semi-permeable membrane to react with hydrogen ions completing the cyclic reaction. The crucial link in the series of reactions is the substitution of a wire for the ordinary electron transport mechanism. A prime consideration is the selection of a semi-permeable membrane which would separate the biological electrode from the oxygen electrode. This type of a membrane would allow passage of hydroxyl ions but not free oxygen. The system used was divided into three compartments by common dialysis membranes. The two outer compartments contained the electrodes, the middle compartment served as a buffer zone. The dialysis membrane, bubbling of oxygen-free nitrogen, effectively prevented oxygen from reaching the biological electrode compartment. The volume of each of the three compartments was 400 milliliters. Platinum sheets were used in the two outer half cells as electrodes. Nitrogen were bubbled continuously into the biological half cells. Oxygen were bubbled continuously into oxygen half cells. Electrical measurements were performed with the laboratory devices. Nocardia has established ability to oxidize hydrocarbons. This is why nocardia were used in the experimental systems. Escherichia coli and glucose oxidase were selected on the basis of their oxygen requirements. Escherichia coli is selected because it is an anaerobic bacterium. Glucose oxidase is selected because it is an oxygen-requiring enzyme. The basal solution was pH 7. Glucose glucose oxidase system was used. This enzyme catalyzes the aerobic oxidation, no reaction when the electrode wire was instead of oxygen. A substitute hydrogen acceptor is required. Electromotive force increased 80 to 180 millivolt and 50 to 100 millivolt was maintained under a load of 1000 ohms. Glucose glucose oxidase system failed to react in the absence of oxygen but did react with methylene blue. It was reasoned that a facultative anaerobe might produce measurable current. Escherichia coli was added to the biological half cell with glucose as substrate. The open circuit voltage increased from 150 to 625 millivolt and, under a load of 1000 ohms, 500 millivolt was maintained for over one hour, at which time the experiment was terminated. The addition of methylene blue had no effect, except that the methylene blue was rapidly decolorized. In the next series of experiments an attempt was made to use a hydrocarbon as fuel. An active ethane oxidizing culture of nocardia was added to the biological half-cell ethane was bubbled into the solution. Apparently, no reaction occurred. On the addition of methylene blue, a slight increase in open circuit voltage was measured. However, this was later shown to be due not to the nocardia ethane system but, rather, to endogenous respiration. A definite increase in metabolic activity occurred glucose was substituted for ethane, additions of methylene blue to this system caused current flow eventually to reach a maximum of 2 mA. Finally, 
a test was made of the effect of a strong oxidizing agent potassium ferrocyanide on the system, with glucose as fuel. When 1 mg of potassium ferrocyanide was added to the oxygen half-cell in the absence of microbial cells at the opposite electrode, only a slight increase in current was measured, however, when Escherichia coli cells were added to the biological half-cell the current increased markedly from 0.1 to 1.6 mA in 30 minutes. The addition of large amounts of potassium ferrocyanide at the oxygen electrode and of methylene blue at the biological electrode resulted in very little current flow unless metabolizing cells were also present at the biological electrode. The data clearly show that when a substitute hydrogen acceptor for oxygen, namely, methylene blue is successfully employed as an oxidant in endogenous respiration or glucose metabolism by either living microbes or the enzyme glucose oxidase, a current is measurable. In fact, Escherichia coli, a facultative anaerobe capable of metabolizing glucose in the absence of either oxygen or methylene blue, yielded current in the experimental system in the absence of methylene blue. Slide. Methylene blue did not serve as a successful hydrogen acceptor in the metabolism of ethane by ethane oxidizers. The biological half-cell must rigidly exclude molecular oxygen. No hydrocarbon oxidations will occur unless intermediate hydrogen acceptors are found. Current measurements can help search for intermediate oxidants that will accept hydrogen. From the data it can be concluded that microbial metabolism is a source of measurable electrical energy is established. Thank you for watching.